start recording here. Highlight of the Belize for me was that we nailed the brick laying part. Like we had a workflow where we had a chain of people and then the layer layer guy could lay a block in like four seconds each, which means that if we continue that pattern, we build the entire wall of this 100, uh, like 14 square meter house in two under three hours. Amazing, just amazing. So we had big tractor with a slurry mixer and a 55 gallon drum that we we solved the slurry the mortar issue and the workflow issues we had back stops at which which against which we laid the block so this brings cbs back into uh like realm of wow these super quick builds that are feasible so good stuff we're, and we're going to redo that re repeat that it was really hard to work with different materials because their materials were different there like wood was different but we're going to redo that again we're going to repeat this event in august twice probably twice like prototype uh more and then do a quick build like a three-day build to show that we can do completion in like three days or so uh aiming towards getting that as a product that we can actually produce on a regular basis for people people who want to mm. get one of these okay here you go um, so looking really good moving forward a very specific thing that came out was how about a kit house that you can buy for fifty thousand dollars that's a thousand square feet you could build with a friend in one week that's that's uh an idea that came about and i think it's realistic mm -hmm. we, it would take some development but that's kind of on my radar right now because if we did that that's changing that, that could be pretty impactful then you have to study why kit houses never fa never succeeded they never did mm -hmm. really succeed they did did succeed in some ways i'm not really sure why they haven't succeeded because you could think of like you know the uber of housing would be a low-cost house that you can build yourself but i think the biggest part is that the producers don't want to do it, it it's uh too hard so can you film in what, what is that uh they say kit house is that the same as modular building or it's different kit house is a, a trail comes up to your site deposits this thing and and allows you to build the house in a in a week with you with a single person and a friend which means that it'll be panelized construction like like pop-up house you ever see pop-up house from france no not really but how is the construction normally like is it a quality issue that's that's why people don't build it or is it um, good quality i think it's a combination no. of a couple of things one is that um skilled people or people that i think one part is the thing where the, the process is too complex altogether like you, you still have to get land yeah. and uh, overall the process seems to be too complicated for anybody to do so that means the organization would have to facilitate that that means energy and lower profits or whatever and that's why like because of the profit margins it wouldn't make so much sense because a lot of people build a very build expensive in an expensive way uh, why do we think we can do it I don't know. I think really real attention to simplicity. I would say simplicity, but still you got to have quality in there too. Um, I can only speculate until we do it. So let's we'll run into the real issues and probably uh, zoning and all of that, like codes and things. It's probably a combination of a lot of factors, but I, I could see hints that it's tractable. At least technically, it's easy probably in terms of practice with all the other social and government details it becomes much more complicated um, but <clears throat> I think technically it's like we've done extreme manufacturing we're, we're seeing that wow you can just do these super fast builds stuff like that we were on Belizean TV so you can see an interview um, of uh, I just posted that today look at the workshops page but let's go let's go right into uh, let's go into the steam camps thing uh, so I I guess update from you because the other people I, I don't know where they are let me try to email them maybe um, Jessica and Chris uh, do, you, do you have some updates you'd like to share because otherwise uh, on my side so it's, yeah it, it's basically the same I sense to you right now there's like four people still on the radar and and um, depending on how those fall through i don't think it's worth like going in 
another round with the same okay. uh, tactics because it seems like it's not the, the right type of uh, work as a traditional like job hunt. If we manage to get like some of these candidates, I think it would be really great if we managed to get them on team uh, on the team and also good to have maybe someone who might not be the traditional um, let's say like maker people, but like come from a more uh, let's say all have different professional experience and different professional backgrounds which they can bring to the team so it would be really great if, if it manages but if it doesn't manage it might be better to um, the approach which you talked about in the earlier meeting to basically run out successful steam camps and then from those steam camps trying to to enlist people or actually uh, you mentioned it and like trying to recruit the schools directly and, and see if they, they want to uh, hold the steam camps. Um, I've been doing some talking to teachers um, in different areas and there is some interest in, in teachers and as I can understand from uh, uh, and one interview I had earlier this week is that um, I think that it's not only interesting for students to do it. If we do it for students then probably high school students might be most interesting. Did you um, ever want to design but also or build Steam something? also Steam teachers might be interested in attending to this workshop. So uh, one of the person who, who wants to do it and I'm concerned there are any questions for, for doing the tests. Um, do you... She wants to do the first Steam camp for other STEM teachers. Uh, and she has a big network because she is a Steam teaching educator. So if we manage to get her into the program, that would be really good. Uh, oh, how can we facilitate that? What's the what's the block you think? Um, well, she's still on. Uh, the other ones who has dropped off has uh, had different blocks, but um, like different pending projects. Um, and one of the most common things is that they can't really take time to do it during the school uh, time. So I've asked all. Well, how about like uh, when there's student camps or student vacations? Um, but I haven't really got a proper answer from that. But it seems to be partly time um, to get time from from the boss to do it. Uh, so when you introduce these four days steam camps, then I think that's when people start to be a little bit more interested and more positive to it. Um, so that would be more. Likely, I think actually the best idea would be to do a four day and splitting it into two weekends uh, uh -huh. camp, um, yeah. if that would be possible. Yes, and then I, I think we can just develop the next product, which is the two day thing. Um, yeah. So essentially like take the curriculum that's there and just sh shorten it to the essentially the first two days work and maybe like Reworked that a little bit, but yeah, I mean, we, we got to do it, and we we, we can, um, think. Uh, and then, Jeremy says we can if we get the thing qualified as professional development hours. How do we do that? Um, can you take any steps on that, or that, that's not your role to um, as a? Would you be able to? pitch that idea of doing the two days as well and see who, do you want to try to p pitch that I mean we can just simply do that as well and just put things on a calendar uh, good news is uh, I just got the videos you didn't see this but there's a uh, the recruit recruitment video for instructors I mentioned that right uh, I got that maybe um, you can ro run with that um, I'll is post that it. the one with like exciting music and text coming up uh, it's the one that's it's not been seen. It's just uh, okay. Do you? Yeah, it starts. Love like the this. thrill of being present at the moment of discovery, seeing someone's journey where creativity. Yeah, that's the beginning. I don't think you've seen it. This has just been. I, I just got back from Belize, so I, I gotta post this and maybe pass it on to you. Um, mm -hmm. So what are what are the next steps right now? Um, so for, I'm having one more, uh, let's see, call with one new prospect teacher next week. So I can run the idea with the two day and see if that works better two day and four day with her. And then I'm yeah. sending the instructions and the information about four days to another teacher who wants to do it and she wants to do it in, uh, in summer. 
if possible. Where are these teachers? Are any of them capable of doing the the U.S. locations or New Zealand locations? Because I mean, we're uh, the easiest way to learn is to attend one uh, to begin yeah. with. Um, so the one who wants to do it in the summer, she's in Minnesota, so she, that would be in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how do we address the? We should come to come up with. Uh, so one thing that emerged in, in uh, Belize, there was one guy who, who's good at marketing. We talked about creating funnels, pr like proper marketing funnels to do this where yeah. we onboard people in a proper way. So that's much more on my radar right now. And the guy actually offered some help on that. So I'm going to work, uh, pursue that. Um, uh, where we got to establish that for the longer term where we're populating the thing with students is not an issue. And then, uh, there's a clear onboarding for teachers who like like right now you're kind of doing it manually and stuff we, we could do a good funnel for that um yeah i think like starting with nine day events for people who have never like been involved in the organizations and then they have to pay an upfront fee it becomes a very big hurdle so starting and trying to as you said like both upsell but also have funnels from different parts like small events and then bigger and bigger events um would be more practical if that's the type of funnel study we're talking about as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I'm just logging Steam Camp log. Jeremy put in a note on us continued. What's it called? Continuing professional development hours certification. I just heard from the one guy um, who I just I just talked to a guy in Seattle actually another guy Seattle Academy of Arts and Sciences uh, steam teacher steam director and he mentioned that he's gonna put people in there for, for professional development hours so it's like I don't get it like do some people is there some formal certification or is that uh, something that some people just take without certification when it's not a certified program. I don't know, but that's something to look at. Um, Jeremy, I, mean, I have one more. The, okay. Sorry, say it again. Uh, so it's part of the. Is that these points? Is that part of the teachers' like um, development plan? Yeah. Yeah, right. this should all go into the funnel. This has got to go into the funnel where professional development. I actually want to put the, the the corporate team building. We have to develop some product, but now I'm actually thinking, can we get some nonprofit investors? Like, I'm going to start asking for that. Like, I'm noticing that, okay, there's some product development time that needs to happen. And it's always been that. But I think we can get maybe some money that through the nonprofit sector to make it happen. Like, I think that's... That's the way I'm thinking right now. Get get a boatload of money to develop the products and the marketing product, which involves the product itself. So the the funnel plus the products that go into that funnel. There's there's a bit of due diligence there. A lot of it can be co-created by assets we already have, but um, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, so on your side, Andreas, what's uh, what's the next step? So um, I think maybe if we can look on that funnel you're talking about as well, me as well, because I think like restarting the same process again might not be the best um, alternative. So I'd rather one of the big other big hurdles is uh, not only the time and like paying for, for the equipment, but also the marketing plan. So the STEM teachers they didn't notice on or talk so much about the marketing plan, but the more entrepreneurial types, basically all of them uh, kind of got stuck on our marketing and didn't feel sure about our marketing so if we yeah. have if we can show that we have brilliant marketing mm. um that yeah, would really it's, help. A, it's a no-brainer yeah that's that's the missing link right now um okay let's develop a killer marketing funnel turns out that the contact uh, <laughs> it's cool because the the guy from um the belize workshop he knows the uh, russell Br brunson the guy who created click funnels 
well, I mean, he was a client of theirs, so so he has access to him. We'll see what's what's there. Maybe we get we get a free nonprofit account with the promise that we're gonna create we're gonna have a thousand paying customers when there's a thousand OSE chapters because we we implement the click funnels successfully. <laughs> That's a good we'll, deal. We'll see what we what he says. Uh, Jessica, can you pipe in? can't hear if you're speaking so I put on a so there's a steam camp log people just if you want to according to the wiki taxonomy steam camp log I put a note so Jeremy's been doing some killer work I mean he just reached out to all the local schools which is that's an awesome idea like if you reach like what I should probably do here is in my local area I should reach out to all all high schools especially private ones because they uh, Jeremy why private schools because they're more what is it? Is it that they have more money, or is it that their their programs are better, or not necessarily? But it seems like pri Jeremy, are you finding that private schools are the the good market? Doesn't matter. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we got to find. A, I guess the process protocol there would be to uh, even. That's good. That's that's good information. Uh, doesn't matter if it's public or private. It's there interested a uh, good approach would be for me here to simply draw up a list and email them so maybe uh, jeremy do you have any marketing material well, an email copy of an email you sent or can you pump that into the steam camp log i am here can you hear me speaking yeah now we can hear you Yeah, can hear you. I was muted. Yeah. <laughs> Do you enjoy talking to yourself? <laughs> Usually. Me too. I do that all the time. Um, Keeps me focused. Okay. Marson, I think you need more people where you live. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so I mean, I think you, well, I've been posting at the schools, posting the yeah. flyer. Uh, it's hard to know. It could be, it's like, in some ways, it's perfect context. In others, you just it's really random that someone might actually pay attention to the flyer, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, do you have, Jessica, do you have any time to uh, do like a search? Because Jeremy did a good deal. He, he reached out to like 40 schools and he just contacted their Steam people. Do you have any time to do something like that? I can do something like that, absolutely. I don't know who those people all are, but I can try. So how do you find those people? You find them by, Jeremy, what was your process? You look at a school and you look at, so, did you call the school? Yeah, so I, um, I went to the school's pages in the staff directories and I found the career counselors who are responsible for helping, you know, juniors and seniors kind of decide where they're going to go college or tech school or right into the job world. And I emailed them directly um, with, you know, some basic information about the camp and, you know, an offer to like, if, if the timing doesn't quite work out since it was such short notice, like we have other camps or like, let's start a dialogue about yeah. when it might work for your school. And that, that email then got passed around to several of the actual engineering or technical people at those schools who are in charge of those programs. And those are the people who are usually getting back to me. Uh-huh. Is that universities or high school or? It's high schools. I'm still working on the universities. The, the high schools have smaller staff, so it's easier to find the career counselor or the person who is going to kind of be someone you can get in contact with who will who will move it on to the right people. Okay, that's a, that I sounds. Actually, like I a almost good think plan. that high schools might be better because they're, I don't know, they're more looking to place people than universities. Yeah. They're kind of trying to own people. Uh. Right? So we're getting at, at the pad your resume and get get experience, whereas in college it's like a steam camp may not necessarily be as direct to their future employment, right? Because then when you go into employment, they don't care about collaboration. <laughs> it's too it might be the name. Now. Like at a college level, maybe we don't want to really call it a camp. You know, college and above. Even I was thinking what we want is often the tr people who are doing the training in those contexts 
So we actually, we were like, it is more about training the facilitators, training the instructors. Um, another detail, if, if when it comes to training for corporations, something which is really big in the corporate world is like design thinking. So like open source design oh. might be really, might be a open way source. to like brand it. Oh, okay. Like combining design thinking with the open source design it might be a open source design way to thinking. Go. I think mm -hmm. that might I think that's true. Work. Okay. Um, and Jeremy, also, I would love to see um, your if you can share your contacts to or like an example email that you're sending to the career counselors because Siraj, who wants to do these camps in in uh, Taiwan uh, or Hong Kong, is also planning is to contact different schools as his way to to get uh, participants um, in future events. Um. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah, I'll get I'll get an email up. I'll put it in this uh, in the Steam Camp log here. A couple of examples of what I've sent out. It's pretty oh, much the same message over and over. So, can you share okay. share the contacts list with the group? Not not public, but just with some of us. Yeah, I can do that. Uh -huh. I have it. I have it all in like a spreadsheet. So yeah, that would be good. Um, it's all public, right? So it's all, you know, it's all stuff I found pretty much online or through, you know, some oh, contacts yeah, okay. that I... Okay, if it's published, uh, the service we can give to the greater world is like, say somebody uh, tries to copy this, <laughs> um, they can ease more easily. That'll be good. Yeah. We can help others and start up if anyone's listening and spying in on this, this conversation. <laughs> um, spying on open source. That's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um okay uh jessica can you um for next week's meeting can, can you do what jeremy did uh, I'm absolutely gonna... and yes okay um now what we want to also talk about is uh the the certification so J jessica when when do you think you can get your your certification exam you're very. I think uh, by next weekend. I should finish it this weekend. Yeah, did you yeah. practice it and start it? Yes. Nice. That's pretty good. So the flyers are nice. Um, that works. Um, we're lean on registrations. <laughs> we need a, a click funnel solution. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What I will do is I'm gonna work on. A, I'm gonna take like probably like over the next three months, just put significant time into the marketing bit to develop this thing. So what I'm going to do is follow up with a guy I met in Belize, which he wants to start essentially like OSC. This is Idaho. And this guy's actually a big builder. He's a, yeah, like a very successful builder. Um, and he's all over this stuff. Like, uh, interestingly, like this, one of these five legged dogs who's entrepreneurial opens like very, very well versed in open source culture he read the book he actually found out about me or osc through uh the, Z the zero marginal cost society book by jeremy mm -hmm. rifkin um talked about this work there so he's all over that very good contact i'm going to follow up with that we actually talked about getting a mastermind together where we developed the marketing the the funnel and the products for that funnel i, th I think that's like i could see it it's there. It's in my mind. We're going to nail this and we're not going to have that issue anymore. Um, okay. Um, what else do we want to talk about? So um, if you want, you can invite me to the marketing. Yeah. Uh, marketing. Mind as well. um, I okay. made some work on it earlier, which before okay. it went to uh, recruitment. Were yeah. you thinking about a click funnel approach? Um, so what click funnel, um, no, that was more about, well, yeah, sure. In one way, the outer layer would, would be yeah, the Twitter, yeah. um, uh, Facebook and Google ads. So what's your, do you have any like ethical or us as open source ecology? How do we regard, let's say Google AdWords and, no, and Facebook fine. ads? That's all right. We got to use those mechanisms so then we can find replacements. Like, like once we're at a, as a billion dollar brand, We'll definitely have a Google alternative. Right now, the Google alternatives suck. Um, so 
That's where it's at. Which we want. And then, Sorry. say it again. Like Google um, presentations. Like we use Google presentations all the yeah. time. That's going to be critical for the incentive challenge. So, yeah. yeah. For example, if we want to have good Facebook ads, then we have to add the Facebook uh, uh, pixel on our web page uh, to get good targeting. So both Facebook and, yeah, and Google no, ads. I'm not opposed to it, but yeah. we just do things like in multiple places. If Facebook is evil, we um, make sure like we never only put it on Facebook. Like we have it on yeah. Google and Facebook. <laughs> Yay. No, we, we, we post as much into the wiki as possible. I had a lot of this discussion with Peter who we talked about the, uh, he can, he's considering like, so he's at a university, he can get students to do like an open source version of Google Docs. Uh, mm -hmm. we consider that we, he might be able to get his students to do that. Like it will be like a year project for a couple of students. Um, but yeah, no, that's going to come about. Don't have to worry about it. Now there's an interesting point to bring about a thing like click funnels. Cause typically it's done for, for just marketing, like stupid stuff, but we have to hack it, essentially hack it to like, yes, we can use the mechanism, which is an effective way to capture people's attention and create a dialogue. But we want to hack that at every step that the content of what we're doing is just so different. And I think we can have major success in that because we're mm -hmm. going to be quite different than we're going to play by different rules than I don't know what that really means like in practice. But I, all I know is that how we go about it could be using this tool that's a well-known marketing tool to, to really good ends. Typically ends like I, I'm not I don't see nonprofits use like click funnels. <laughs> like the the formal um full marketing protocol that um that for profit thing things use so that'll be an interesting exercise i'm I'm all over it but but just we got to be very careful about the ethical aspects simply that we're not no we're being ethical throughout and we're not uh yeah i mean just business as usual for us we got to be ethical about what we do there because uh, yeah yeah, which is very interesting because then we're going to be using kind of like mainstream tools to do very creative stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So I don't know what else we can talk about right now. I'm, I'm going to get to actually, uh, I, I need to publish that teacher video. So maybe you can benefit from that and maybe we can start spreading it. Like that teacher video would be a cool thing for within the whole ClickFunnel platform too because that's a pretty well made one. I'll, I'll publish that on YouTube like in a little bit. Um, keywords, um, another one is, um, if we talk about marketing, let's, um, let's get a bunch, a hundred keywords, top keywords for steam slash summer X slash incentive challenge, which is all related. Um, and then we could talk about targeted campaigns, like even it's kind of gets into like some of the substance behind a click funnel thing, but like for targeted marketing. I think we can possibly spend some dollars on um, like Facebook targeted ads. So let's start with some really, really, uh, uh, really good keywords. So maybe we can go over that next week. Um, there's a page on a wiki called keywords. Um, I just put a category there, steam and summer X. So open source design thinking, steam camps for high school, open source steam camps. I guess we should always, we have to test those. How do we test the the keywords by Googling and seeing how many things come up, and whether OSE is the first one to get there? Or so if if you want to test things for Google, then um, you shouldn't use the normal Google platform because that that one would be tailored for you. There is a special one which you can use, which is kind of user agnostic. Um, what is that? Uh, it was a long time ago. I used it. I'll see if I can find it again. Um, let's see. And for Facebook ads, then if we use Facebook pixel, then we don't actually need to collect our own keywords. Instead, what, what it would do is through the code on the web page, it would gather information of, of people uh, who visit the people. And then we kind of catch it will capture an audience, a profile of an audience. And then we can copy that profile and say, we want to send out our ad to this, this type of people and it's copy paste. So we don't need to actually add any keywords ourselves for the Google ads. We will need to add uh, keywords. Oh, so you're going to, you're looking for it. Sorry? 
Are you looking for what this is? You're Googling what that uh, is? So for the Facebook part, it's something we can use after while we can't use it in the beginning. So in the beginning, we need to test a little bit. But while we test, it can capture data and capture profiles okay, uh, from who, who clicks. What's it called? Uh, it's called, I think it's called uh, Facebook Pixel. Oh, OK. OK, that's beyond me. Uh, are you familiar with it? Or? I've seen some introductions about it, so I know how it works, but I haven't used it myself. I've, uh, I've been working on a friend who does marketing for, he worked for Microsoft for a while and he does their, like did online marketing for them and trying to get him to, to commit to helping us a little bit. So um, he's probably a week or two out before he can really commit to any time, but I'm real hopeful that he'll jump in here soon and help us. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. Um, That's cool. Um, and the last thing is, Jeremy, did you do any additional work on um, any on the Pi Pi tablet? That's the only outstanding thing for the next Steam Cab. We want to make a little forward progress on it, which would mean specialized cables, right? So I, I, you can get it into a pretty limited um, bezel, like. Uh, length and width mm -hmm. if you do some soldering. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I have a, a rough design for a case that should get it enclosed. I think Chris actually maybe printed it. Yeah. yeah, so I, uh, I printed out uh, your parts, Jeremy, and um, I know on a 1.2 nozzle, and definitely saw some tight fit, so I was gonna go in and and uh, well, I, I drum, dremel some things out to make, to make sure everything will fit with a couple of changes. Uh, yeah, I do think everything will fit, although it wasn't fitting on my D3D uh, uh, print platform, so I printed it on a, a larger printer and I put a 1.2 on. Um, so what I'm wanting to try and do is uh, try a two-piece print, a uh, two-piece enclosure print, um, for the, for the, at least for the outside. Um, uh, that's what about, what about the, what happened to the 4D print? Can we do that? So I, I tried a couple different things. I think for the back panel you could do it, um, but it was really hard to get the bezel to print and like the notch for the where the screen mounts into to be consistent uh, if you change the angle. And it's really hard to fold because it's you know it's it's fairly. I built it fairly thick. I suppose we could make it thinner. Well, but fold, you know, you need a perforation, right? Yeah, yeah, but even with the perforation, because there's like a 90 degree change where the bezel, how I drew okay. it. All right. There's like a flat piece for the bezel, and then it's a 90 up, kind of like an L shape. Anyways. Yeah, so what I was thinking was, I'm going to turn my video on for just a quick second, um, was a, a two piece uh, um, a top and bottom, two piece uh, um, dovetail uh, enclosure that would, one would come from the top, one would come from the bottom, like I did for um, these parametric cases that we made a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, basically, it would be uh, two pieces that would be printed upright, and that way you would also have more access to detail for uh, uh, your holes and stuff than um, in the XY plane. Mm. So th these sorts of enclosures, at least that's how production engineering-wise um, has worked out better for me when I've had to make a, a lot of um, enclosures in a, in a short amount of time, especially uh, sometimes it's easier to print up than it is to, is to print out. Um, so that's the design, uh, the idea that I have uh, for this. I'm um, wanting to do a, a mock-up to, to, to show you guys. Um, is that on the part library for the Raspberry Pi tablet? The working dock? Are you hiding that away? Uh, this somewhere? thing is no. I haven't put it up. I haven't put it up yet. Um, I, uh, um, I I haven't put it up onto a computer yet. But I mean, okay. there's this thing from a uh, project from years ago that I'm uh, drawing from. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I will be working in the in the PyTab working doc. I just wanted I touched base. I wanted to uh, re recreate what Jeremy had done first before starting uh, in, a, in a new direction. You know, taking it into any new direction or anything. So I wanted to verify take his alignment and arrangements with a CAD that he's done um, and uh, and try and build a two-piece vessel around it I like that. Nice. Um, do you, are we meeting tomorrow for the follow-up on the Pi tablet or nobody's got product on it? Should we try to, should I email everybody on that? 
Because we were supposed to remember, uh, we yeah. said a month ago yeah. we're going to meet on a pie tablet. Yeah. Should we do that for an uh, hour or so? Or I haven't. I didn't work uh, on yeah. it myself. Yeah, yeah, I haven't worked on it, but I'll play catch up. We could still meet and see how far yeah. we can get. Yeah, let's let's meet for an hour and, and kind of really focus on that. See what we have. Um, do we think we're going to need specialized cables, just the ninety degree cables, or? My thought would we don't be, need that to prototype, do we? We still need to no. get the whole thing working before worrying about which. Well, I mean, it works. Is. It already works, right? Yeah. Adding adding functionality. I'm ready for the phone. My <laughs> I have to fix. Oh, my, you still want to do a phone, phone before you before you put an enclosure? No, we, Jessica, we got to do an enclosure <laughs> for a basic first before you talk about the Raspberry Pi phone. No, it could work like a phone. I can make it work from that box I have. Okay. Then I don't have to replace my phone. I'd be so happy. I'm no, thinking no, about taking it I'm, apart and trying to just hook it in. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to have a uh, good five days. I mean, we're, we're building on a last steam camp from last time. So we're going to have good, well, not five days. We, we have just one day. Uh, we, we have that. So we have to get that in decent shape where we can print out a basic thing that's just basically packaged to what we have already. So maybe we could get our brains around that tomorrow. Yeah. Sounds yeah, good. I think with the case and the cables, I think until we're ready to bring the battery pack on board, we're not going to benefit from the cable. Because the Pi board has got a thickness that you really can't get around. So when we when we want to integrate batteries in there, then we'll want to move it forward. What do we want to do if you want to? I, I missed you cut out. Um, can you hear me all right? Pretty good, but there's some noise back. There was a Chris or... Jeremy. Okay. So I, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll talk tomorrow about it. Okay. Okay. Um, let's do it. So on a calendar, I would have there. That's good. I, I like it that we're doing a little bit. Um, can we do two, 2 p.m., two to three, or one to two? Either of those times are fine for me. Okay. Uh, Jeremy says noon Pacific or later. Chris? Yeah, afternoon would be better. Afternoon would be better for me. Uh, any any time. Um, is it two o'clock? You're saying is yeah. that uh, Central Time? Three. Not CST. Yeah. Pi tablet. Awesome. That'll be good. Um, that's Saturday. Yeah, I'll, I'll email the other crew. See if I, I'm not sure any. I didn't haven't heard anybody playing with a Pi tablet on the European side, uh, but maybe they did. It looks like Jeremy's. I mean, that's pretty cool for what we have there. Like a nice fit, right? Like Jeremy can say that the fit is pretty decent there. What you have in the picture in the Google Photos? Yeah, the fit is good um, in one direction. I had to print it in halves. Uh, yeah. I was testing. I wasn't sure how the fit was going to be across the other way because I ended up with some flex in my print because of the split. Okay. Um, quick question there. What do you? What are those three wires on the back there? Is that the white? So the they're labeled in there. There one is a power and one is a I think it's like D positive and D negative and those are well, actually one's a ground and one's D positive one's D negative. Those are the USB connections. So by soldering to those pads, you don't need to put a USB into the side for the touch screen. And by using the oh, wow. power, there's another set of pads I soldered to to get rid of the power connection. Uh, is that pretty robust and safe to do? Or are you gonna bust a nut on a actual uh, screen there I thought it was pretty easy because okay. that that circuit board is spaced off of the screen by probably a half a mil or more okay. half a millimeter I mean okay we can try that Chris do you like that I like it because that gets us to nice compact compactness there no, so, sorry, say that last part again. No, he soldered the USB on the back so that we don't have the big USB thing hanging out off the side. Yeah, uh, yes, I think that's a great idea. Could be really good. Uh, that would liberate us yeah. from the need of the specialized cables. We just got to rip up 
another USB cable, which is fine, right? Yeah, that, there should be plenty for uh, salvage. I mean, yeah, okay. Every home I know has a dozen that are broken. Yep, I found it off Jeremy Log. Uh, this is what what I'm looking at is there. No, not that. It's on Jeremy's log. Um, okay, cool. Uh, okay, let's do it. I'll, I'll email the whole group really fast uh, for the follow-up session. And uh, let's continue tomorrow. Uh, Chris, you've got one guy signed up to your place. There's another guy. He's a farrier, a guy who does horseshoes, a digital horseshoe man. Uh, digital horseshoes. So you probably have two people so far but um yeah okay and then i'm planning on new zealand so and then jeremy's got his possible it's possible jeremy do you does it sound like those guys are ready like march early like the march march date or no oh, jeremy cut out okay well, well we can leave it go okay so let's maybe continue that the discussion tomorrow for 2 p.m. Yeah, Jer Jeremy, oh, we asked you real quick. Do you think the March, because because we we're lining up this high school in in the Seattle area there, do you think they're going to be ready for this 14th or later than that? Don't know. Okay. Anything else we want to cover, or should we t take off from here? Um, should we set up a meeting to? Well, we're we're supposed to uh, I, on a calendar. We've got that. I've got it on my calendar for every week. Did you guys? Do you guys have that? Friday, Friday the same time. Yeah, yeah, every Friday. Yeah, yeah. So you want to discuss marketing next Friday? Yeah, yeah. Continue on the marketing. How far we got on the marketing, and by that time, maybe we'll actually have some actually on. Yeah, yeah. I want to carry the click funnels discussion further. And what all we need to get in there and just get a get a mastermind going on that. Uh, I'll talk to the guy I met in Belize and uh, Brett Walker from Idaho. And, uh, we'll go from there. And uh, any other uh, documentation we need on the, on the curriculum before this next? Um, yeah, the uh, scene camp. Uh, what about it? Sorry, I, I know that we have a lot of really good uh, videos and stuff that we go from, but I'm knowing that there's, uh, I have kind of a list going of what are the things that are still uh, missing, um, at least from my perspective, um, uh, more documentation will need for, uh, for, the, for, for just the curriculum. Yeah, we can, we can ask Peter to maybe like, he's decent on KiCad. Um, I wanted mm. to do a KiCad, like if we can translate, like I'll ask Peter if he has time to simplify the Arduino to like a one channel Arduino that we can actually begin designing in, in KiCad as a basic lesson. Um, yeah. The KiCad is a, that's a big component I want to get better at this time around. Um, yeah. See if we can do it. But beyond that, like if we can get a, a decent case for the Raspberry Pi tablet, it could be a pleasant experience. Now I was thinking for this time around, just do an off the shelf battery pack. You guys cool with that? Yeah. Because you can get those, I think, pretty cheap, like 15 bucks or something for a little pack. And not have to worry about the charge controller and yeah. all, all of that stuff. So, yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's do that. That's how I was using my PyTab just um, in dev. We just put it on a USB uh, uh, power pack. Um, if we all got the same USB power pack too, we could integrate that into part of the case to be um, eventually replaced by a... Um, uh, the proper lithium ion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're designing it, always keeping in mind how how this will scale and and mo yeah. be modified. Yeah, by all means. So I'm gonna look. I'm, I have a I have one that's pretty close. There might I'm sure there's probably one uh, closer, but I'm gonna look and see if we can find I can find a USB battery pack that's almost the same dimensions as our stack of what is it five uh, five batteries. Yeah. 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 And it does. Yeah, that would be cool. And it doesn't have to be that bit well it gets really or practical smart. use with like five batteries yeah that would be a, like a really functional long life battery yeah. thing that would be yeah, really yeah. cool 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. 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 So let's let's. Um, uh, and also, Chris, just the last thing. Do you think you could do the video? I got to do the video too for because I got to pass my exam. I might not get certified to teach OSC. <laughs> Uh, oh, a video. Um, yeah. You could do it in eight minutes tomorrow. <laughs> no, I mean, you can do it. But yes, see if you can get it up so we have a, a paper trail for the authorities, you know? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, I can do it. No, like, for example, when I'm talking to, to people, it's like I can, you know, I, I can show them, like, what, what we're able to do. Jeremy's video is pretty cool. I mean, he kind of took the the first lead on it. It's a basic thing. It's um might not win an academy award but it's it's a very informative video it's great mm -hmm. awesome i'll check it out okay um okay well that's that sounds good so i think i think we're good for now so we're talking tomorrow uh 2 p.m for the pie pie discussion i'll send an email on that right now okay Anything else, or we're pretty good for now? Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. This is good. We'll continue and uh, improving our products as we go forward and scaling the Steam Camps. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Take care, guys. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you all. See you, Jeremy. Bye bye.